Hey guys, welcome to Clockwork Dandy Needles for another breakdown of Kaiju number 8, episode 10. I hope you guys are looking after yourselves and welcome back to the channel. I have just completed the recording for Summer Overview. Summer Overview will go out in the coming week and then in about two weeks time we're going to have the end of season and I'm going to come at you with some fun, fun awards, have some fun with them and we will kiss the season goodbye as we enter into the summer. Do check out the Summer Overview when it goes out. It will tell you guys what's going on for the next season as the next season is going to be a little bit bumpy due to my latest announcement thank you guys so much for tuning in today's episode was absolutely amazing i loved it i've got a lot to go through but before we do make sure you are subscribed check out all the coffee links and everything and of course i'm going to start flashing up my blog because i am going very shortly to japan so i have started my blog if you want to check out the blog i will start dropping the links in the comment section let's just get straight to it because i've got about a page and a half of notes to go through Loki love the rumble that kaiju number 10 gives off so it's not loud but it's quite high pitch it's to the point where you believe it's beyond your hearing range to actually hear naturally you can see kafka holding his head but nobody else around him can hear it because obviously kafka's ears operate on a different spectrum to everyone else's he can hear slightly lower so i just love the rumble because it feels really chunky it feels really beefy and i think that's the thing of the old Godzilla movies I actually would do appreciate is the, the the rumbling the screaming the roars they all sound really guttural really really cool and it just feels like there's a, there's a whole kaiju behind them which, when the guys say he's still fighting it despite the fact that it has transformed I, I was kind of sarcastically in my head going what the hell is he supposed to do just walk away like oh you've just transformed I'm out of here bye he didn't really have the choice now Hoshino is one of my favorite characters I absolutely love him this week I did think that the Becca curse was literally being activated and it was gonna happen I thought he died about five times during the show I was literally on my edge just going is he dead is this it is he gone because I was just certain that he was definitely going to meet his end this week. Thankfully, he hasn't. But he is, of course, coughing up a little bit of the human bean juice here. Now, I love the moment where everyone's silent over the headset because we think he's passed away. And then there's the goofy little pose and the little teeth come out again. And I love it because he's like goofy and trying to uplift the morale, even when he is bleeding out. And I think that is absolutely amazing. And I just I think he's just such a cool character. And I'm really glad that they have announced that there's going to be more material surrounding him there is a big announcement for kaiju number eight coming up i think it's this week coming out is it i vaguely saw it before i went to record and i didn't actually pay attention to the exact date but there is announcements coming out people thinking it's season two people saying that it could be the ova maybe it's going to be a movie it will be interesting to see what they bring out because either or would be fantastic and i do hope that in japan i can see movies but i doubt they're going to be in english or have the subtitles so that could make things a little bit harder for me now i do like the fight sequence the fight sequence where they interject lots and lots of backstory for hoshino presuming it's his dad but it could be this parental figure who is telling him that back in the day you would have been seen a genius you would have been amazing but there is no place in this world for blades as we go forward into technology where guns are a real thing i like that because it's the idea of tradition and seeing that this idea this traditional way of fighting has no place anymore and everybody telling him to just give up give up over and over again and it almost made me feel a little bit like kafka the moment where he thought it was too old i love how mina comes into the picture and instead of telling him to give up which he was preparing for she's like no i see your potential and i think that we can cover for each other i love that because you can use someone's advantages to cover your weaknesses and vice versa and these two do have that nicely made where she can't even use a blade as she says I like the lighting in the sequence. I think it's really nice. His face kind of lights up and obviously you've got this little bar of the window behind it kind of like coming up. It just looks like he's turning into the light and he's found the light. He's found the way forward, which I think is really, really good. Now, right at the last second, again, when it was doing another one of those fake outs when I thought my boy was going to die, bringing it back and you can see him taking the suit beyond its limits and we do see this week that these suits do have a limit and I like that because at one point I thought they were just invincible, that these suits have like every ability they can heal broken bones they can heal ble in internal bleeding but there is a limit and once you hit that 100 it's kind of done it's, it's nice to have these limiters in place because it doesn't feel like this guy is invincible and i know that my boy isn't invincible because he even though it does feel like he did get up quite a bit he definitely took a lot of damage 
I do like the pairing of Hoshino and Shinomiya when it comes to knocking out the kneecap. I thought that was really cool. Again, it shows you the ability to cover for each other's weaknesses. If you've got a strength, I can open that up for you. You can do what I can't do. I like that. I like the team ups. I think Hoshino, he's very good at seeing a opening, seeing people's potentials and seeing where he can like build on it. And he also knows the limit to his powers. I love the fact that he said, I have deduced that your weapons can't hurt me. And he literally shouts back. I knew that from the start. Like he knew he didn't stand a chance and he wasn't expecting anything more. He's very good at assessing the situation, staying calm, but also being realistic. Every time I thought they were going to kill him off and I was just getting agitated and there was the moment where he looks like he was going to get eaten and i said oh this is game over he's going to eat him and he's going to take on all of his powers it's nice to see mina finally arriving on the battlefield i don't know where she is maybe she was just out on business or something maybe it was actually mentioned and i just didn't pick up on that bit of dialogue but she is here the bit which kind of pulled me out just a bit of my um, my submersion just for a little bit was the moment where she arrives and the tiger looks like it does a barrel roll She's on the windowsill. I think she jumps down and I think they're dodging. The animation looked a little bit janky. I don't know what it was. It made me laugh, but it does seem that the tiger can do a lot of cool stuff. Now, just when I thought we were going to have the... This is a fake out, like transformation. It was last minute saved, of course, by Mina coming in. But I was starting to wonder in my head. I was like, is this it? Is this actually really it? Because are they really going to leave us with another episode of him being teased but not actually using his powers and then that's it? I'm literally about to throw my pen down in frustration if you don't do something. And of course, this is the episode where we did something because of course the title is Secrets Revealed. Oh, I feel so bad. I just feel so, so bad for everything because I knew it was going to happen. I knew that he'd be forced to use it. And we've obviously got this giant kaiju mega boom boom in the sky trying to avoid the words that youtube does not like it's in the sky literally about to go off and of course nobody else can do anything everyone's pretty much said you know it's game over we can't act in time at least you've got all the civilians out of there but are they really out of that zone but it's of course the moment where kafka knows that he has to do something he's the only one who really can do something so he steps up i'm so happy he steps up because i really wanted to see the transformation i wanted to see him using that form actually putting that form to use and being i guess strong because he's a very strong character and it always sometimes is sad seeing him relegated to a support role or i do think he would be a very good person to have in the base the, the people over the headset who are talking to hoshino he would be a very good character to even have there because his knowledge for kaiju is just so strong it's very much like a deku situation where i think he really would be very good in the base but i want him to be out there i want him to be really packing the punch i want people to see him for who he really is it's the moment where hoshino suddenly feels betrayed and that stung because i'm like actually you know what yeah it's that moment where i guess erin turns around and reina and Bertold are not the people you think they are transforms into a kaiju and hoshino's just like i was trying to ignore it like i knew something was up i tried to put it from my mind because i really liked him like it really he really grew on me and i liked that because hoshino was the reason why he was allowed to have a chance in the first place to get into the defense force and now he just feels betrayed and i'm sad as well because it's very clear he's not attacking them it's very clear that he's trying his best to get that thing out the way it is a, it's a bit of a batman moment as well where he tries to push the bomb away and then he falls back and it still somehow goes off so it doesn't really feel like he's done much but maybe it being higher up it's perhaps saved them from it literally detonating straight above their heads so maybe that really did help i think at one point somebody even said that he there's no casualties surrounding kaiju, kaiju number eight he's always trying to like avoid it and even in the fight against hoshino he wasn't trying to hurt him and he recognized him trying to smack at the blades not him hope that him going on trial is perhaps the best thing because it means they're not going to shoot him. I was expecting her to just turn around and just straight up shoot him, but obviously she doesn't. The soundtrack at this point is just so good. There are moments when the soundtrack really does take over and it sounds amazing, but then other times where I forget the soundtrack's even there. It does feel like that moment now where Eren's gone on trial. All we need now is Hoshino Levi to basically kick him in the head and prove that he's just a, a weakling and he can handle him. It does feel like that moment. I don't like comparing the two, but it's it's feeling like it a little bit this week. But it was such a good episode that I can't really fault it for anything. I, I enjoyed it, but I am feeling nervous for Kafka because I guess the last few episodes are going to be him on trial. It's perhaps going to be to and fro whether they kill him or not or whether they experiment on him and that's sad i just hope that 
they they can see sense and the fact that he's not a threat and he's trying to help them out and they can actually see yes actually we can make this work and we can go up against these big threats the kaiju number 10 might be down and out but i don't think he's going to be the last they're seeing we know that kaiju number nine is out there somewhere we know that there's perhaps the potential for other kaijus to be out there so i really hope that next episode they're able to work something out but i am feeling a little bit nervous for our boy feeling sad for my boy hoshina he's bleeding out and he feels betrayed that's perhaps a really crap day for him feeling a bit crap and sucky but it was also the moment where kafka is crying because he sees the guys saluting mina and there's a little moment there and it does feel like he's just looking on from the sidelines not really part of it and at that point was when i was going to throw the pen down because it felt like he was there and he had obviously survived and been nothing but a backup but he wasn't really in the forefront where i wanted him and i, I think it's because i care for him so much i want him to do well so thank you guys so much for tuning in and thank you so much for your support i really hope you guys are looking forward to the next chapter of clockwork dandy needles as we go further have new content as i move to japan i bring out some new stuff i will be upgrading my laptop next month so we're going to have a new computer come through hopefully that allows me to do some streaming whilst i'm in japan with you thank you guys so much take care i will see you guys again next week bye guys